guys you're welcome back thanks for clicking so nightclub actually turned this man into a muslim so let's listen to his story so when you turn to google and search for the fastest growing religion you will find islam topping the charge as of speaking today almost a quarter of the world's population identify as muslim well, at the same time, is the religion that has been denigrated the most by the media. Because it's the only religion that acts like the mafia that will f kill you. Isn't that strange? On every corner of the internet, you see people converting to Islam, as well as big influential people and entrepreneurs sharing their stories. People like Andrew Tate. I believe that Islam is beautiful. And I think it has the solutions to a lot of the problems we're facing in the world today. Former Dutch politician Joram van Klaver. I decided to write an anti-Islam book and it ended up me becoming a Muslim. Elfie Best. And I genuinely felt something in the mosque that I've never felt anywhere. What a beautiful community, what a beautiful and simple religion. And this list goes on. Every year we see an increasing number of Muslims in the population of non-Muslim countries. But how? Today, I'm sharing a personal story on how this turned me into this. And yes, it's a slightly different video than what you're used to see from me on this channel. Normally, I just speak about entrepreneurship, mindset, and my business journey. But I think this topic deserves some time because, yes, I converted to Islam. But let's rewind and start at the beginning of my journey. I grew up like a normal kid, in a normal household, parents with a normal income, a mother, a father and a sister. But when I was seven years old, things changed. My parents got divorced. I didn't see my father a lot. My mother had a really hard time managing the situation, financially, emotionally. It wasn't easy as a boy of just seven years old seeing this. As a kid growing up, I went through very impulsive and unwise periods. Not making the right decision, hanging out with the wrong people, alcohol at a young age. You could argue that I didn't have the best or most common childhood, but it was necessary to become the man that I am today. Because struggle makes a man, you learn by experience. and. Luckily, I have a great family that supports me, cares about me, loves me, and after all, I still manage to have a very strong bond with my father. And therefore, I now say, Alhamdulillah, meaning, praise be to God. But how did this happen? Why does this white guy speak Arabic and talk about Islam? Well, good question. In my younger years, I would never ever thought I would become a Muslim one day. But when looking back at my journey, it makes a lot of sense. At 15, 16 years old, I started to turn my emotions and negative experiences slowly into my motivation. I started building my future self. I started reading books, listening to podcasts, going to the gym more often, waking up early, etc. etc. I became a lot more conscious of the impact of the bad habits I developed during my younger years. I knew that if I didn't change these habits, my future wouldn't change either. And during this change, my group of friends started to become smaller and smaller. Some of them thought it was really weird what I was doing, but I didn't really care because I had this dream in my mind. I became obsessed with growing, learning and developing myself. While my group of friends started to become smaller, a few friends never left. And someday somebody asked me, did you notice that almost all of your friends you have left are Muslim? Why is that? So I started thinking and I was like, yeah, you're right. Why is that? But the answer was very simple. At that age, my Muslim friends were the only ones not drinking, not partying. And while all of the other boys in school were talking about how many girls they had, my friends were talking about the universe and the meaning of life. I mean, Muslims that stick to their religion are one of the most disciplined people I've ever seen. I just felt really inspired with these people around me. And I never really considered myself an atheist. I always had the feeling that there had to be more than what we can see with our own eyes. 
I mean, sometimes I just couldn't sleep when I was thinking about how incredibly used the universe around us is. Just think about it. Most of us live their day-to-day life, working, eating, sleeping. But when you take a moment to really think about it, whether you're a Muslim, a Christian, an atheist, it's incredible. The skill of the universe, the oceans, the jungles, the animals, big, small. How did this all came to place? What are we? What is the meaning of life? So even with these Muslim friends around me, in the beginning, my interest was not really focused on the religion itself. It was more their way of life, the brotherhood, the love and respect that slowly shifted my focus to the religion that instilled these traits in them. Still without the idea of thinking I would ever become a Muslim. And this was because I always had the idea that religion was like an old fairy tale that already was disproven by science. But the more and more I started digging into it, the more I realized I was completely wrong. So first of all, God or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as we Muslims call it, is not just a man sitting somewhere in the clouds with a magic wand. It's an indescribable force, the singular and all compassing power behind the creation what we see around us. And science proves that even the chair that I'm sitting on right now is made of enormously small and fast moving atoms. This is called quantum mechanics. And if these electronics in it would stop moving, atoms would become unstable and I would not be able to sit on this chair. But what is the thing that makes these atoms move and stay in its position? You see, what is this force? But I'll not dive too deep into this since this video is meant to share my experience, not to convince you. So long story short, for every question I asked, I received a powerful answer when digging more into Islam. And when people nowadays ask me why I became religious, I always say two reasons. One, for the rules and the way of living in this worldly life, we call it dunya in Arabic. And two, the hereafter, called akhira. So let's start with the second one. All life is a test. This is something we can't argue about. It doesn't matter if you want to become the greatest sportsman alive or just live a normal, safe life. We all have to deal with negative experiences. We all have to deal with our emotions, our desires. We will lose people we care about, natural disasters and so on. We all strive for an abundant life. Yet one out of 10 people have a burnout. 90% of the adults are too stressed. So whatever you do, you will never be 100% satisfied with this life because you will be constantly tested. I mean, if you're lucky, you will live 70, maybe 80 years on this planet. It's gone before you know, it's a matter of time and your clock is ticking, so do mine. Shouldn't there be more than just this? At least I would like to believe that. But since this life is a test, just like an exam in school, there's also a final judgment. This is why Muslims, Christians and Jews around the world are so disciplined and strict to their religion. And this also brings me back to my first reason, the rule and the way of living in this dunya, this worldly life. Religion provides a manual, and for me it's the Quran. Islam offers comprehensive guidance for all aspects in life, including family, marriage, finance, health, and so on. It gives me a great feeling to build a family and raise my children with love, spiritual guidance, common principles and way of living. Nowadays we put so many different ideologies in people's mind that families are not united anymore. Divorce rates are going skyrocket, the youth is doing drugs, losing their virginity at 30, 40, 15 years old, dancing, twerking on TikTok to get the most views, crime rates are increasing each year, the rich become richer, the poor become poorer. This whole system is fucked. Everyone acts upon what feels best for them not for the people around them. Several years ago, when religion was more common, you had to uphold your family name, respect your parents, everyone was dressed properly, the husband had to work his ass off so the wife didn't have to work and could take care of the children and the household. The whole morality has changed. And when you believe life is a test and you will be judged upon that, all you can do is focus on good deeds, be an inspiration, spreading love, helping people. 
and this is what my religion teaches me. When I die, the only thing I will be judged upon is my deeds, not the materialistic things, not the girls, not the houses, not the big business, but the impact, the love, the connection, the good intent, the good deeds. So this was my personal story I wanted to share with you today. And if you made it to the end, I want to thank you for listening. Honestly, I appreciate that. I hope to see you in the next video. Assalamu alaikum. Bye bye. Wow, beautiful. Like the fact that I could listen to a story and I didn't feel bored and I, I was inspired. I could listen to a story and the story kind of you know inspired me. I was inspired by a story. I was moved by a story. Just imagine how everything all began, you know. It was always a you know nice person, a clubbing person, he loves to go out, have fun, you know, all of a sudden you notice that there's no all these things there's no benefit in it. And he had a group of friends, like I said, he has some friends that are Muslim, he has some that are not Muslim. He notices that Muslims in general they stick to their religion. You know and you never see them partying, getting involved in all this their Aram things. They talk about Islam, they talk about how to grow spiritually and that actually inspired him and that's how his you know journey to Islam began, you know. So he was more like an atheist before but later he got to you know do some research about Islam and he loved everything about Muslim, the way they carry themselves, you know, their ways of life, how Quran is and mind-blowing mind-blowing story i really enjoyed it so much guys thank you so much for watching i'll see you in the next one bye